Welcome back to another episode of Basic Baking. My name is Nick and today I'm going to show you guys how to make my decadent chocolate cake. My chocolate cake recipe is really moist and it's kind of on the dense side. Really, really delicious and if you're anything like me and you have constant chocolate cravings, this really hits the spot and it will solve all your chocolate craving problems. So again, really easy to make. Let's get stuck into it. But before we do, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and hit the like button so that YouTube can let others know about this video. Let's begin with our dry ingredients. So we are gonna add our flour, sugar, cocoa powder, bicarb soda, and some salt into a large mixing bowl. And we're gonna mix this with a hand mixer today until everything is really well combined. Now guys, I'm gonna quickly pause for a second because I should mention what you're seeing on screen right now is one batch of my chocolate cake recipe. To make the six layered cake that you see in this video, you're gonna to need to double this recipe. And the reason I only show one batch is because most people don't have bowls big enough to actually make two batches at once. So we're gonna make one batch and you're gonna to need to double it. Now that all of our dry ingredients are mixed, we are going to add our butter. So our butter is nice and softened. I've talked a lot about this in my frosting videos and in my cupcake videos, but I'll quickly mention it again. You wanna make sure that your butter is at room temperature. Now, if it's cold where you are, and we're in the middle of winter in Australia right now, of course, it's not gonna be nice and soft, even at room temperature. So when you see room temperature ingredients written in a recipe, what you're after is something that's about body temperature. So something that when you touch it, it doesn't feel warm, it doesn't feel cold. Butter especially won't be stiff. When it's cold, it will be stiff but you don't want it to be stiff, you want it to be nice and soft. So when you put your butter, when you put your finger into the butter, it should kind of go in fairly easily with just a little bit of resistance. You also wanna make sure that your milk is at room temperature. So I would recommend if it's coming straight out of the fridge, which most of the time it is, you pop it in the microwave for 30 seconds. We're gonna pop our eggs and milk into our mixture and we're gonna mix this on medium speed until everything is really well combined. Now guys, I always recommend mixing all of the ingredients in your bowl with a spatula and this is exactly why, because as you mix with a hand mixer, or even with a stand mixer, it never actually fully gets all the ingredients at the bottom of the bowl properly. So you always wanna make sure you scrape down. That's rule number one. And probably my biggest baking tip when it comes to baking, make sure you scrape. That way all of your ingredients get mixed in properly. You're gonna give it a final mix for 30 seconds just to make sure everything is really well combined. Once your batter is nice and smooth and you can't see any dry ingredients, you wanna stop mixing. The worst thing you can do when you're making a cake is over mix, and you definitely wanna avoid that because it can result in a kind of chewy, hockey puck texture <laughs> where you can throw it at the wall and it'll probably put a hole through the wall. So you want a nice, soft, delicate cake, so don't over mix. Now, I have three eight inch cake tins here, and I've actually made a video on how to prepare your cake tins lots of different types of cake tins. Um, if you wanna watch that video, I think it's like up there somewhere, but I've just sprayed this with oil, lined the bottom with baking paper, and we're gonna pour our batter into our cake tins. We have three evenly. Well, once you've got all of your mixture distributed nice and evenly, you're gonna bake this for about 60 minutes. Or well, once they're baked, you're gonna let them cool down completely. I actually recommend baking these the day before you put your cake together. That way, when you're putting it together, your cake is nice and chilled and stiff, and it's easier to work with and less crumbly. Speaking of crumbly, once your cakes have cooled down and you've chilled them, I'm gonna be using a cake leveler, but you can use a serrated knife to slice each cake in half and then that way you end up with six layers of cake. 
We are gonna be moving on to the crumb coat stage. So the crumb coat is all about filling your cake and then also adding a layer of frosting on the outside of your cake once it's stacked to make sure that all of the crumbs of your cake are trapped in the first layer of frosting so they don't show on the final layer of frosting and that final layer is nice and clean. So we are gonna begin by adding a little dab of buttercream. I'm using my chocolate Swiss meringue buttercream frosting. We're gonna add a dab of frosting on top of that. Spread it using an offset spatula. I use offset spatulas a lot when I'm making cakes because I find that your hands don't get in the way when you're actually spreading frosting around. You're gonna add your first layer of cake on top of that. You wanna firmly press it down so that it sticks to the frosting and to the cake board. And then you are going to pipe a ring of frosting around the top of that cake. Then we're gonna fill that with some more frosting. And I'm gonna use my offset spatula to spread that frosting around nice and evenly. Now, today I'm using a cake turntable. Sometimes I call it a cake spinning thingy, but it's actually called a cake turntable. And these are really, really useful for cake decorating. If you have one of these, it means that you can spin it around as you're frosting or leveling off, and you don't have to like move around your table as you're actually frosting. So I would recommend getting one of these. The one that I use is like a really heavy duty metal one because I would do a lot of cake decorating, but you can pick up like plastic ones which are pretty good and they're on the cheaper side as well. Once you've got that nice and even, you're gonna add your next layer of cake and you're gonna repeat that process. So today we're making a really basic chocolate cake, but the really cool thing about this recipe is you can add lots of different things. Like you can add layers of chocolate sauce in your frosting in between each cake, or you can add candy or chopped chocolate. You can pretty much make this cake any flavor you like, and it's up to your imagination what you do with it. Well, once we have all six layers stacked on top of each other, we're gonna be doing the crumb coat. So like I said, the crumb coat is all about trapping your cake crumbs in the first layer of frosting so they don't show in the final layer. And I'm basically just spreading it around the cake and it doesn't need to be perfect, guys. It just needs to kind of be nice and neat, but I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So I like to make it look really, really neat. So that's what you're seeing on screen right now. Once you have your crumb coat done and you're happy with the way that it looks, you are gonna pop this in the fridge and let it chill for at least four hours. You want this really, really chilled so that when you put your final layer of frosting on, your cake is nice and stiff, it's not moving around and wobbling and it makes decorating much easier. I actually pop this in the fridge overnight. Now you might be thinking, Nick, what happens if you have your cake in the fridge overnight. You've already chilled it in the fridge overnight when you baked it, and now you're crumb coating, and then you're telling us to chill it overnight again. It's been two days since we baked this cake. Well, it's not gonna lose moisture, it's not gonna dry out, because you're actually trapping that moisture in the first crumb coat, so you don't need to worry about having baked your cake two days ago and then popping it in the fridge for a second time overnight because the moisture is still locked in there. Well, once your cake has chilled and I'm on day three now, I add my final decorations and this is my favorite part. So we are going to be adding our final layer of frosting around the cake. So I start at the bottom and I work my way up then I add some frosting on top of the cake and I use a bench scraper to smooth it off. Now, I did use a bench scraper or a cake scraper in the crumb coat. That's because I'm a perfectionist, but you really wanna use one of these for the final layer. It makes getting that smooth edge really, really easy and they're not that expensive either. You can pick these up online or at a cake supply store with everything that's going on right now, you probably wanna grab one of these online. So I am going to go around my cake, 
If I see any gaps in my frosting as I'm going around, I'm just gonna simply fill those in with my piping bag and keep going around. As you go around and you scrape frosting off to make it nice and straight, you're going to scrape that frosting off the bench scraper and then go around again. And you wanna make sure that you're holding your bench scraper nice and straight. Not on an angle, make sure it's nice and straight. Now, it's not a race. You wanna go as slowly as you like because cake decorating is fun, so you should take your time. Once you have it looking nice and neat, we are going to work on the top edges. Now, getting your perfect cake edges is actually not that difficult. We've already got the tools for it if you've been using the tools I've been using in this recipe video. So to get the nice clean cake edges, I'm gonna be using an offset spatula and my bench or cake scraper. So we're gonna begin with the offset spatula and we're just gonna be getting rid of that excess frosting on top of the cake, nice and gently and nice and slowly. But once you've gone around the cake and you've gotten rid of the excess frosting, we're gonna go over it with the bench scraper. Now, you wanna make sure that you're holding it nice and flat, not on an angle, nice and flat, and you wanna go slow. So across the cake, nice and flat, on a slight angle as you're holding it, so that your fingers aren't touching the top of the cake. And as you go around, you can turn your cake turntable and gently and slowly finish those, uh, the top of the cake. So that's how I get my nice, perfect cake edges. When I say perfect, I don't mean picture perfect. I mean nice and perfect so that when you're decorating your cake, you really can't tell if there were any slight imperfections. If anyone tells you that you can get absolute perfect cake edges, they're not telling you the truth. <laughs> I've been doing this for a long time and you cannot get like absolute perfect cake edges that I know of. So this is how I do it and I never really worry too much about it because when I go around the cake and find, like do the final decorations, I'm covering those edges anyway and it looks nice and neat enough. Now, we are going to finish decorating this cake off by adding some sprinkles at the bottom of the cake so I'm using chocolate sprinkles and I'm going to do that ombre effect thingy that I like doing with my sprinkles. So I start heavy with the sprinkles at the bottom and then as I go up the cake, I add less and less sprinkles so it looks like an ombre of sprinkles. I'm going to drizzle some of my chocolate sauce around the top of the cake. We're gonna finally finish this cake off with uh, some swirls of frosting on the top and I have fitted the end of my piping bag with an open star tip. If you wanna learn how to do frosting techniques and you're a beginner or you just wanna learn more about frosting techniques, I have a really great video on how to frost cupcakes and how to get the perfect swirl. I am basically using the exact same technique but just a little bit smaller on top of my cake. So once you've gone around the cake, you're gonna finish it off with some more sprinkles of chocolate sprinkles and some maraschino cherries to make it look nice and classic. And that is our chocolate cake. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had so much fun making it. I love chocolate, I love chocolate cakes, and you're gonna love my chocolate cake recipe. If you wanna learn how to make it and you wanna grab the recipe, I've left the link in the box down below for you guys. Follow that and you'll be able to grab the recipe. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you're enjoying this series and I'll see you all on the next episode of Basic Baking on the Scrand Line. Bye.